Now, has anyone used a kaleidoscope before? Mm. Would you like to tell us what it is? Eh? It's a long tube yep. with long uh, colored pieces in the end, and you look through the lens at the front, and as you rotate the uh, wheel at the end of this tube, you get different colors. It's like a picture mm -hmm. like a yeah, so basically the distinctive feature of a kaleidoscope is that it can provide you many different pictures as you turn the tube. And the trip is, your PowerPoint can be like a kaleidoscope. And because that's because the PowerPoint provides so many different functionalities, different animation schemes. But the thing is, if you start using so many different animation schemes, you're actually placing the emphasis on the mediums as opposed to the message. So it's not uncommon for you to see a presentation slide in which the first point is zooming from the left and the second point is zooming from the right. And as this transition to the next slide, it feel like a somersault or rotation. But you should be asking yourself, do you want your slide to be the focus? Or do you want your message to be the focus? Well, let me put it to you in this different perspective. Would you like your audience to walk out of the door and say to themselves, wow, that was a really important presentation? Or would you prefer that they walk out and say, wow, what a fascinating slide. If you're like me and you prefer the emphasis to be on the message, what you should do is probably choose one animation scheme and stick to it. Because the more animation schemes you use, the more kaleidoscopic it becomes. And the more kaleidoscopic it becomes, the more you're placing an emphasis on the medium as opposed to the message. Does that make sense? Now, for the second element, we're talking about fuzzy logic. The truth is, the more slides you have, the, diff the more difficult it is for the audience members to see the links between each and every one of them. Now, let me illustrate what I mean. Now, some of you may know this. I'm also a member of another Toastmasters club called the Yamchat Toastmasters. And Yamchat is a pun on the word Yamcha. We meet on Saturday morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, at 6 o'clock. And the last time I went there was actually two weeks ago, so that's going to be the 13th of June. That's about right. And on that occasion, believe it or not, our sergeant at the time forgot to bring the key to the meeting. And the trip is we needed someone like Murat. Yeah. You know, someone dependable, someone reliable, and someone that wears glasses. <laughs> but the truth is, we don't have anyone like to write another club. So we don't have the key to our meeting. And that's also when Batman and Robin came to our rescue. We had Eric Pace, our Disney native driver, who drove to Summer Hills to fetch the key. And we also had Clay Wilson, the Disney native GPS, to help Eric to drive to Summer Hills to fetch the key. Now let's go over the text one more time. Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, circular key to summer hills and back. How long do you expect that to take? At least an hour. Sorry? At least an hour. At least an hour? Really? Some of, oh, it's close to Redmond if you don't know where summer hills. Oh, like 40 minute round trip? Yeah, probably around 40 minutes. Yeah. But on that day, on a Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, it actually took them like one hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> and when Eric came back, I was like, Eric, what took you so long? Eric looked back at me and said, well, believe it or not, Clay, instead of taking me straight to the destination, Clay took us by the longer route. And I was like, oh, maybe that explains why Clay is a taxi driver. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, a speech, is light driving. You are essentially taking your audience on a journey to a destination. And the PowerPoint slides, they are the landmark that you show your audience along the way. And so, <coughs> sorry. So you can either take your audience to a destination by the most efficient route, or you can take them by the longer route with more slides and reach the destination. Why, in either way, you'll reach the destination. But if you choose to take the longer route, 
your audience are more likely to get lost along the way. Isn't that true? Your pocket will be fuller. <laughs> your pocket will be fuller. <laughs> what? Would you like to explain that to us? We were just talking about the taxi one, so I said obviously they're going to more destinations when you be paid higher. I, I hope so. Are you going to pay me for today's session? <laughs> I, I can talk for half, half a day. <laughs> so, as you can see, if you're going to take the longer route, it's going to be more distracting and your audience are more likely to get lost along the way. So, what you should do instead is probably to strip away the unnecessary details by cutting down on the number of slides you have. Now, two slides come immediately to mind that's redundant. Do you have any questions? Slide. And the thank you slide. Now think about it. Why would you need a slide that says thank you to prompt you to turn to your audience and say thank you? Why don't you just sincerely go to your audience and say thank you? The same goes for the you have any questions slide. Why do you need a machine to prompt you to do something as simple as saying do you have any questions? So avoid fuzzy logic by cutting down on the on unnecessary slides because it's redundant. Now the third element that we, that we are going to look at is commentaries. As you cut down on the amount of slides, you should also consider cutting down on the amount of commentaries you have on each slide. Because let's analyze this for a moment. You're giving a verbal presentation, and if you have a wordy slide after it, what are you asking your audience to do? Well, first, you're asking your audience to look at you because you're presenting. You're asking your audience to listen to you because you're talking. You're asking your audience to look at the slide because it's up there. And finally, you're asking your audience to read the slides because you have words on them. Or at the same time. Are you asking too much of your audience? Because whether or not you realize it, your PowerPoint has just become a source of distraction to your verbal message. And this is a point we'll go back into you later on, but just remember for now that it's good if you can cut down on the, the number of slides and also the contents per slide. Does that, does that make sense? Now before you go back into this topic once more, we should probably wrap up the first segment and what I'd like you to do is probably grab yourself a partner, someone next to you will do, and if you don't know the person next to you, introduce yourself, after which ask them a question, ask them what have you gotten out of the first segment so far. So do that quickly, a few minutes. Yeah. Where are we? Like we say, like yeah, the yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 I guess a short slide. Does someone shout out something that they've learned so far? Yeah. Oh, someone. Yeah. 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 Something you've learned out of your discussion or the second? I think the main theme of the first segment was just cutting the fat out of your presentation and making sure that you just have a sufficient amount of slides and content in the slides so that your presentation doesn't end up becoming a distraction. Rather, it just reinforces your verbal message. Yep. How about you two on the side? Thanks for all your feedback, and that essentially concluded the first segment. And before we move on to the second segment, we're going to show you a clip from the World Championship of Public Speaking. But before we do so, before we do so, I want you, as you watch the clip, I want you to also to evaluate the speech. So what that means is that, what that means is that, I want you to look at both. Oh, it's okay, I'll, I'll do it. So as you re as you watch the presentation, I want you to have a look at what you think the speaker did well and also what you think the speaker can improve on. So one good point and also one improvement point. So let's go. Speaker, 